Right, hello guys, welcome back. Um, third episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Looking at the captains, probably choose Damien Johnson when I'm prompted to. Not going to do it at a minute because they can sometimes believe that your know, players can believe that you um, you change the captain too quickly and it can upset them. I'm looking to um, find myself some of those third choice players I was talking about in the um, in the last episode. A guy that can play all across the defence. I have myself a spare centre mid in Jed Wallace. Um, a winger that can use either feet that can play on both wings. And I've got myself a, a third choice striker in David Connolly. So I'm looking for a guy that can play all across the defence. Or maybe just left and right back because I can keep Ben Chorley if I have to. And... Um, and a guy that can play on both wings. And then I think the squad will be put together. And then I'll just be looking to sell players. Which still I have no offers for. Even though they've been listed. So that's getting a bit frustrating for me. To be honest. But um, I'm sure there'll be a, a club that makes an offer eventually. And if they don't. Then I just won't renew their players', co their players contracts. And I, I believe most of, most of them are on one-year contracts. Most of the squad is on a one-year contract, I think, because of because of the problems that we've had, the pro the problems that Portsmouth have had financially. But there's nobody here that looks like they could be particularly good. Um, you just go through. Because, if possible, I'd like to get a guy that can play all across the defence rather than Ben Chorley and have a guy that can play left and right back because then it's another person out and Ben Chorley's wages are quite expensive. I believe I believe they're over a thousand pounds, which is kind of a lot for the for the club that I'm playing that I, that I'm managing. So let me just narrow this down a bit more with marking and heading. See if I can find myself a guy that's good at both. Unrealistic transfers is ticked, so I know that anyone uh, anyone that turns up I can realistically sign. Probably, um, well, I'm definitely looking at free agents. I've got I've got 5k in my transfer budget, so I don't think I'll be paying anybody for that. I want to save that because it normally gets used up in agents fees anyway. And only 1.3k now for for wages. He looks quite good. He's out for six to seven months, though. So if I can sign him. I I don't foresee any a massive injury crisis. Like my squad is quite fit at the moment so hopefully if I could sign him but it's not to be they don't want to sell him and they won't loan him because of his first team commitments to the club now I could go back I suppose and look in six or seven months when they're trying to get in some fitness after coming back from his injury Michael Oliver there he looks he looks quite good but his markings at two which is terrible but I'll probably offer him a contract just Purely because of his ability, his his um his versatility. So now Jude Sterling, Jude Sterling looks all right actually. I feel like I could probably offer him a contract with his um. He only has nine marking, but it's probably not gonna be a massive difference because he's my third choice and he's only on five hundred pound a week. That's not a lot at all, to be honest. Didn't offer Michael Oliver a contract, couldn't agree with him, especially for how poor his marking was. But I have a few injuries, like I think I had three or four injuries, but they're not particularly long term. Um, I have no idea how to say his name, but I'm going to call him Fahid. I'll send him to the under 18 squad and set him for loan. Um, I believe I'm probably going to list maybe Ricky Holmes or maybe I'll list Jed Wallace for loan. The Jedi Wallace looks quite good. So, I think it might be a... Um, I don't know, to be honest, with uh, Ricky Holmes or Jed Wallace, who I'm going to keep. Um, Jed Wallace is on less money. Maybe even Thierry Racon. Nah, Racon's quite good. Quite an all-round player. However, I'm going to put Jed Wallace there. Probably to start, just because he's younger. Uh, ben Shawley. Ben Shawley actually looks quite good, to be honest, for 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 the for the league I'm in. So yeah, I think I am gonna list Ricky Holmes. His passing is not particularly great, and 
he's the oldest. He's not older than Thierry Racon, but Thierry Racon's better than him. So it was a direct competition between Ricky Holmes and Jed Wallace, and the age of Ricky Holmes was what was what the problem was there. So now let me search for a, a winger, an either-sided winger, maybe. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna withdraw a contract off of Jude Sterling to be honest. I'll probably just keep Ben Chorley. And then I'll just need to find a um a right and left back because it's probably gonna be easier for me. And with Chorley as as the captain, it'd be silly to sell him, really. I can keep him as the vice captain. Now now I'm just looking for a left and right back. I can just look at tackling and dribbling. I like dribbling as a as an ability for my for my fullbacks because I like my fullbacks to my fullbacks are set to support and I like them to support the attacks. So let me see Knudsen here, twenty six, pretty average all round, but he's either footed, which means he can play on both flank, uh, both fullback positions relatively easily. But let me see if there's anything better that I could find. Um, take that to ten, just because it's not massively important to me. Still not really no free agents. Um, let's double check his stats. Let me get let me get a scalpel on him because I'm not I'm not fully sold on him. Let me see. Um, I'll get a scalpel on him, and now I'm gonna look for my wingers. My a guy a uh, winger, a guy that can play on both wings. So let me hope that I can find one straight away. Darren Curry. Um, <laughs> not very good physical stats again, but let me see, let me see, because I know he's old as well, so, but he's really going to be a third choice, and the fact that he's a player coach, his cat could be a good thing for me in the future, I can maybe sign him up as a coach at the end of next season, so, with any luck, he can become a coach, uh, still remain a player coach at Portsmouth, still become a full coach at Portsmouth, and then probably ask for less money that way. So let me see. The transfer offer for Darren Curry has become public knowledge. Knudsen wouldn't be a worthwhile signing. So I need to find myself another fullback then if Knudsen's not going to be a worthwhile signing. Another another left and right back. Um, not either footed. Not massively fussed about them being either footed. Tackling. Um, let me see. Acceleration. Yeah. Let's rather than looking for that dribbling ability, let's look at how quick they are. Because normally the wingers you're going to come up against will be relatively quick. So tackling and their their quickness is something that's important to me. Michael Barker looks quite good. Crossing isn't great, but for two hundred pound a week and at nineteen potentially becomes better so I'll definitely offer him a contract he's worth the ability to he's worth the contract of 200 pound a week so yep so that should be my left and right back sorted so now all I need is a a winger that can play on both wings because I got a striker center back midfielder I got David Connolly will play up front Chorley can play center back Terry Rackon can play center mid and Defensive mid and Darren Curry doesn't want to talk to me, so I'm still looking for that winger. He doesn't want to talk to me because of his off the field duties for Dagenham and Redbridge. So nope. So I need to find myself another winger. I bit. Um. Let's see, what we find with the search. Acceleration and pace. Roman Rose at the top there. I remember Roman Rose. I sat him for for um for Dartford. I think it was on like Foot Manager 2011, and he was amazing, but not very good anymore on this game. Look at Flair, I suppose. See what we got here. Shane Fitzgerald is the. Oh no, there's two free agents. Uh, not very good at all. Carlos Roca. Hmm. Older, isn't he? Um, looking for kind of younger players. Look at the ability for long shots, because if they're going to be cutting in, I like them to be able to shoot. Maybe maybe get me a couple of goals a season. Uh, let me see. Let's get rid of Flair. Hello. I am not even going to try and say that name. Bossacota, maybe? Axel Bossacota. But he looks quite good. I 
But it looks quite good, so I'll definitely offer him a contract. Uh, see if we can get him for four or fifty. Uh, we can. That's always nice. A nice kind of. I've spent under a thousand pounds to get those to those two players. Those two backup players. No offers for Holmes. Bit annoying. Still, nobody is making offers for any of my players that I've transfer listed. Um, draw Ipswich in the Capital One Cup. Not the easiest game. Is they're two divisions above me. It could have been more difficult, I suppose, if we got like a top championship team. But um, it's probably not. It's probably not going to be a winnable game. I'm going to put my second team out anyway, as just just for fitness reasons, really, and for the for me prioritizing the league. So, to be honest, unless I'd have got another League Two team, I don't think any game would have been winnable. Same with the FA Cup, really. Like I'll have to get a lower league team because I, I, that's not my focus. Like as I get further along, maybe next year or whatnot. I'll prioritise them more, but not at this point in time. Uh, let's have a look at the injury update. Nothing nothing massively serious. Burton have signed Jude Sterling. Not that it matters because I withdrew my contract offer for him anyway. So just three days now until we play Millwall. Not very long at all. Pretty ha If I can sign those two players, I'll be pretty. Ha the squad will be finished. My first team squad will be sorted. Um, and then I'll just honestly be looking at... Um, Selling the the dead wood around, just go through the, the tr all the transfers. Bradley Tarbuck probably loaned him out for the ages. Darren Curry got withdrawn. Bossa Kota, I'm gonna say, is a contract. Same with Michael Barker, both contracts, both on the contract stages. Um, yes, two days now. Let's see, and Bossa Kota has agreed to sign with us, which is always good. Third choice there, though looks. Quite decent, quite young as well. I think it's only about 23, so I can definitely uh, 24. Sorry, so I can definitely definitely grow. And with my two, with my left winger being 37, there. So there's always there's always space for him to step up. And um, we signed Barker as well, so I've got both of those. So I'm pretty sure that the the squad is is now will be as good as it will be for the rest of the season. Maybe I'll look. At signing another goalkeeper, depending on how much, um, depending on how much wage budget I've left after selling the players. Maybe if there's one for a free transfer, so that when Etheridge goes on his on his um, international dates, that uh, I have two goalkeepers always. So yeah, because I like to have two goalkeepers always, at least three. So with Etheridge gone, I'll need Phil Smith to fill in. But if Phil Smith's injured, then it gives you one of those greyed out goalkeepers who are never, never very good at all, to be honest. So I'll have to avoid a Phil Smith injury. Normally, I don't put a, a goalkeeper on the bench because I just don't see the point of it. Very rarely will your keeper get sent off or injured, or very even rare that they'll get injured in a game. And normally, I don't tend to see goalkeepers sent off. And on the, rare okay, on the rare occasion it does happen, I suppose you've just got to live with it because I'd rather n not have... I'd rather have a foot, uh, uh, an outfield player on the bench in case I need it of an injury or whatnot. Because the way I set my bench up as well is I normally have two defenders, two midfielders... No, 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 three, mi three defenders, three midfielders and a striker. So I normally have a right-back, left-back, centre-back and I have a centre-mid or defensive... centre-mid and defensive-mid in this case... A guy that can play both, uh, my left winger, my right winger, and a striker. So I have cover for every position in case there's an injury. Because in this game, it's very, very... You quite often, especially in the lower leagues, you'll pick up injuries to your players. Or your players will become tired. So you need to be able to to make them changes. But it's the day of the game. And I'm going to sim pre-season. I'm going to do pre-season off-camera. So... I think we'll probably call the episode right about here. So I'd just like to thank you for watching. Say if you could like, subscribe, that would be helpful. Help me out a lot. Uh, Twitter links in the description. Follow me if you want. I'll be starting a FIFA series called Play Away to 500k. Looking for some wages. And goodbye.